friends, it's Kara here with Kinsley's Creative Palette, and I am going to show you guys today how to finish up your watering can. So if it's your first time joining me, welcome. Um, I help women um, gain more confidence through creativity, and this is the project we're currently working on, um, and I just wanted to show you guys how to finish it up. So the first week, we assembled our template. If you don't know what that is, you can go to the website and for $5 you can purchase the pattern that you print at home and you cut it out and you trace it on your wood. And then on um, the second week, we cut our door hanger. So there's a video. Um, you can go watch how to cut a door hanger. The third week, we put our base coats on, which we only used, let me think, one, two, three, four. We used four colors um, to paint this base coat. And we're actually only going to use um, one additional color to finish it up, I believe. Um, I could be wrong, but you don't need a lot. Just use what you have. So we're going to get started. The first thing we're going to do is I love polka dots. And most people love polka dots. Um, but sometimes they can be hard to paint. And so I want to show you, I did a whole... Um, a whole series on painting polka dots. And if you're afraid to paint polka dots, you can always get these. Um, but my favorite way to paint polka dots is with a paintbrush. So this is my favorite brush. It is a triangular handled, um, plastic handled brush that is a 5-8. Okay, this is my absolute favorite. Um, they sell these triangular handled at Walmart, at Michaels, and then I also have them on my website. So the first thing that we're going to do is get the gray. Um, we used this, it's just called gray, um, to paint the watering can last week. And I need to either lighten or darken that gray to do a tone-on-tone -tone polka dot. So let me see if I can get any more out of here. Almost empty. If not, I may have to open a new bottle. Okay, and I'm going to slap my apron on real quick. So I don't get my shirt all messed up. Let's see. Okay. All right. So let's get painting. Um, I'm gonna grab some white, and to make my new gray, I'm just gonna mix white and gray together. Oh man, that light is bad. Um, there you go. Okay. Can y'all see that? And I'm just using the top of an egg carton. So I'm just mixing some of that. I'm just getting it. I'm pulling some of the um, white into the gray until I get it light enough. It needs to be enough color contrast that we're going to be able to see it. In fact, I might need to go lighter. Now, normally when I mix my paint, I use the back end of a small paintbrush, but this time I'm just using my brush because I'm going to need a lot of paint in it to make my polka dots. Okay, so I've got a lot of paint on my brush, and I'm going to go to my board, and I'm going to start making my polka dots. To do that, you're going to set your brush on the board. You're going to spin, keeping the middle exactly where it's at. So I'm not moving the middle. I'm only spinning the outside. I'm going to show you all what that looks like. I did it with a lot of paint, so if you can see that. But see that, that polka dot? I'm going to do that same thing, but I'm going to go in a triangular pattern. So I'm going to do one here. Now, if you need to, you can get more paint on your brush. I'm going in a triangular pattern with my polka dots. So in order to make this a triangular pattern, these two with the next one have to make a triangle. So I need to go here, or I would need to go here. And since I can't go here, because it's off my board, I'm gonna go here. Now, on one side of my paintbrush, I'm getting a lot of paint, and then I'm just gonna swirl. And we're gonna do this. We're gonna cover the rest of the board like that. Now, if your polka dots are not all exactly the same size, that's okay. Just remember, this is hand painted. It is not computer generated. So there's not gonna be anything perfect about this. Okay, I'm gonna do a half polka dot here. And to do a half, you only swirl halfway around. Okay, so I did that. 
Let's see, let's do one right here. Okay, so any three polka dots that are closest together on my board, as of right now, should make polka or should make triangles. So let's let's show you what that means. So these three made a triangle. Let's move these two. Those three make a triangle. Um, these three would make a really big triangle, but to finish that one up, I'm gonna put one right here. And if, um, if you're commenting, I can't see anything. So um, I will come back and answer questions afterwards. Okay, so I've got these three and these three all make triangles. So now let's do the bottom. We're gonna add a polka dot right here. We're gonna add one. I love it when the polka dots go off the board because it's almost like a pattern, almost like a piece of scrapbook paper or fabric that you just like laid across there and it's, it's gonna go off the board. So it just like continues the pattern. It makes it look like it would just continue. All right, so I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna do a really small partial polka dot right here. And then, let's see gonna do one right here just a partial and another partial here and then I need to do one coming up here I'm trying to make sure y'all can see that I'm gonna actually paint this whole um, spout this light gray. Now, if y'all wanted to get really fancy before you put, oops, I just put my finger in that. Before you put your polka dots on, um, you could have put a silver shimmer. They actually make silver paint, but it tends to be very translucent. So you can't just paint the silver paint. Now some of it you can, but most of just the, the silver that you get in the craft bottles, um, most of it is transparent. So anytime I'm using that type of paint, I will put a gray base coat and then I will cover it with that silver so that you get that kind of chrome effect. Well, I guess not chrome, um, just kind of a shimmery effect. So you could have done that before we put our polka dots all over. I'm just going back and I'm adding a little bit more color to the middles because the outsides were thick, but the middles um, didn't get as much paint. So I'm just gonna brighten those up. They don't have to be 100% um, opaque. Uh, they just need to be on there. All right, so I've got all of the polka dots done. <laughs> Thank you, Renee. Hey, Alicia, and I can see Heather's on. Okay, comments are showing right now, but if anybody commented before, I did not see it. Okay, so I'm gonna rinse my brush. Now, I'm doing that off camera, let me show you. I get, these I get at Dollar Tree, and they're usually around spring, summertime, and there's like three or four of them for a dollar, and they are amazing. I like them so much better than disposable cups, but I just put water in here. Mine's a little bit warm. Um, and then I'm going to grab um, my microfiber towel and I'm going to take it out of the water and I'm going to dry my brush, just back, wiggle it back and forth and get my bristles back. Hello, Alicia. Um, thank you. Uh, this is result of quarantine hair. Um, good thing I decided I was going to grow it out, huh? Okay, so I'm going to flip my board so that you'll be able to see the flowers. Good morning, Mary Jane. Okay, so now I'm gonna work on this part of it. And in order to do that, I painted most of my flowers dark. Um, yes, thank you, y'all are so sweet. Y'all make me feel so good. Honestly, I'm not gonna lie, like I've been dreading coming on camera um, last week and this week and even next week because I just, it's hard to grow a pixie cut out and make it, I actually I cut the back last week, I think I told y'all, holy cow, like scared to death. Okay, so let me get back to painting. So what you're gonna wanna do is if you painted a dark flower, you're gonna wanna accent and light 
If you painted a light flower, you're going to want to accent in dark. If you painted your leaves dark, you're going to want to accent in light. Does that make sense? So we're going to do that. We're going to, I'm just going to go through this. Do not overthink this. This is one of those things that up close, you're like, ooh, I don't really like it. But at a distance, when you look at it, it's going to be gorgeous. Okay, so I want y'all to really, really, really um, give yourselves grace when you do this. Remember that the reason that we're doing this is for relaxation, for therapeutic reasons, um, to just give ourselves that creative break. So don't be hard on yourself. If you find yourself coming to a point of, oh my gosh, I hate this, this is terrible, I need you to get up and walk away. Change your mind frame and realize that it's just paint and you can paint over it again, okay? so. We're going to our flowers. I'm going to size down a brush. I'm going to stay in the same brush family, um, the triangular, because I just love them. Um, but I want the next step down. And because I have six million brushes out on my table, because we've been doing the kids painting on Wednesday or on Thursdays, I've got lots to pick from. Okay, so um, this is another triangular. This one is a number 10. Where did that puppy go? There was a puppy in here. Um, it's, it's raining like really bad this morning. And so my dogs, poor things, they're having to be in the house and they are not super happy. Okay, so if you joined us last week, you know that I used white and pink to make all three of these pinks. So what do you think I'm gonna do to make all my accent colors? Any guesses? I'm gonna do the same thing because I need to stay in the same color family. And when I say that, what I mean is, um, it, let me show you two. I have two pink, let me, yeah, let me hold it down here. I have two pinks on my tray. I was painting before I came live. This one is called, I love this color, Dragon Fruit. And it has more of a, maybe orangey undertone. I don't, I don't even really, maybe red. And then this one has more of like a purpley undertone. So if I put this on these, it's going to look all wrong because these two colors don't go together. But if I will stick with my same color and add white to it, um, I can get all the different shades that I want to. I'll just gradually add white in. But because I do have a light flower, we're going to start in the straight pink. So I'm going to grab my brush and you know what? I'm second guessing. Let me try this brush on um, something else before I go straight to my paint. All right, so it's always a good idea to have somewhere else that you can practice if you're switching brushes. Okay, yes, I like the way that brush is gonna paint. Um, because if you get a brush and you go to your straight to your board, um, uh-oh, look what I did. If you go straight to your board and it, um, doesn't work out well, then you have to cover it up. But if you test it ahead of time, you can avoid some of that. All right, so let's go straight to it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in the middle. So just a C, like just a little C in the middle. Let me get more paint on my brush and I'm gonna go right outside of that C and I'm just gonna kind of loop these together. They don't all have to connect, but I'm just gonna kind of loop most of them. Okay, can y'all see that? Now I'm gonna go around the outside of my flower. It doesn't have to be all the way on the outside. You can, um, thank you, Pam. Um, hey, Ma Mary, how are you today? Is it already after, oh, it's not afternoon for me. Is it afternoon for you? Um, so I'm gonna go on the outside, but I'm leaving some of that light pink right on the edge. I'm just gonna go all the way around like that. And you can do this quicker. It doesn't have to be so, um, I don't know how to say that. Sheena, thank you so much. You're so sweet. Okay, this one is gonna need the um, lightest, or I'm sorry, this one is gonna need the middle tone for the light color. This one is gonna need the, dark, the lightest color because of um, the contrast, so. This one needs the lightest, so we're gonna paint this one next. Now, this one is such a big flower that I'm gonna size back up 
to the brush I used for polka dots. So this was by Five Eights. Hey Vanessa, well welcome. Okay, so I've got my white paint and I have my pink. But in order to get the color for this, I'm gonna lighten this pink until I get it the right color. So I'm just dragging some white into that pink. I don't wanna go too far. I kinda wanna get to this tone. Look what I just did again. I keep setting my, my um, paint on here. Let me do this real quick. Guys, y'all like how I'm painting with my fingers? <laughs> um, I just wanna put a, a really thin coat on to cover up that gray that I just smudged and I need it to dry super fast. So I'm just improvising and I just use my fingers. Now that'll dry super fast. Okay, so I can't really show you because I don't want to set it on my board, but I just mixed it just enough to get to this color. Now, I've got a lot of paint in my brush, but I'm doing the same thing. I'm going to start with that C in the middle, and it's not a full C. Then I'm just going to kind of go around, and these don't have to be perfect. You're just basically making a, the flower petals. Okay, now we're gonna do the next one. And guys, I realize you're looking at this going, oh, that doesn't look very good. It's gonna look good in the end. Okay. Right. My friend Christy always says, trust the process, trust the process. And you see how that got a little bit brighter? That's okay. All right, so those are done. Now I'm gonna mix even more. Thank you, Stacy. I love these colors too. Um, in fact, when I was painting this, when I did the template and I did my original painting, um, oh, wrong brush, I did different colors and I, I love pink so much. You can tell like my logo, everything about my life is pink. I bleed uh, magenta. So it's funny. I was like, you know what? We're going to go all pink. I'm just going to have fun with pink. So I'm going really light with this one, but I'm switching back to my five, eight, no, my number 10 brush and start with my C in the middle. And then I'm just making these crazy loopities around here. All right, and then I'm gonna go back and I get some more. And I'm gonna do the same thing around the edge. Now this one goes underneath that flower. Yes, you're right, Belinda. Um, I just don't have any baby wipes in here. They're actually in my car. I don't I don't have babies anymore. I mean, I do. My babies are 10 and 12. But I always keep baby wipes in my car. I forget to bring them in. But that's a fabulous, fabulous idea. Okay, so now we have done all of our pedally things. This stuff down here is almost dry. But um, we're going to need it all the way dry to finish that bottom part. So... We're going to stay up here. Now, it's okay that this is still a little bit wet. I'm going to grab black. Yep, I just said it. I'm going to grab black and squirt some black on my tray. And we're going to highlight one side. Um, this is something that a lot of um, people struggle with. They, they, want, they want to do highlighting and they want to add that next dimension um, an interest to their painting, but they don't really know how. So the best way to think about it is we're going to highlight as if the light is coming from one side. So when I highlight this, I want mine coming from this way, almost like the sun is over here and it's shining on here. Okay. So I'm going to dip in the black and, um, I'm going to use, I'm, I just went right back down or right back to my number 10 brush. I'm going to go straight into the black and you're just gonna wispy, add in some um, accents. So I'm gonna do part of this one, but only on the one side, okay? Only on the one side. No, why did you say no, Mary? No black? Is that what you were saying no to? All right, and then we're gonna do this part. We're gonna start here. I'm just adding, and you can thicken it, you can make them thin, however you want to do it. I'm just adding some black. Sorry, Mary, did I break your heart? All right, so there is the accents for that one. 
and you can go thicker if you ooh 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 did y'all see that it's a big paint boogie you can go thicker if you want to you can leave these kind of sparse you can do them however you want but I'm just adding just shading to one side we're gonna do the same thing down here um, I'm gonna have to shade um, this part of the petal the interior let me get some of that paint off my brush and then we're gonna go here now this one like I said this petal is over the top of this so you don't want to do anything right here but this petal is sticking out so we can still do it now we're gonna do this one same thing I'm still cracking up Mary says not black I think the black's gonna be fun because I'm gonna add an initial to the bottom and it's gonna be in black okay now I'm gonna leave that just like that for now and then I'm gonna switch to um, I'm gonna grab this green and I'm gonna add some white to my green because we're trying to stick with just five colors Okay, I was trying to do this where you could go to Walmart and you could buy, you know, I know you're getting your groceries and you sneak right by that craft aisle and you grab your five colors and you can do this painting. So you need gray, white, black, magenta pink, or the, yeah, this is called bright magenta, and gray, any gray that you want. Okay, so now I'm going to grab the green that I used. Now you could also grab um, a lime green, but... I'm just gonna make a lighter green I'm gonna add white I might I might add white I haven't decided yet okay so let me add some green and then I'm gonna add some white right here to my green because I need to get that color Let's see I need to get um, an accent color for that thank you so much Amy all right, so I'm just mixing my green on my tray. Hello, Sherry from Mississippi. Okay, so I've got a light green. Might want to make it a little bit darker, actually. Let's see. There again, you can test your brush on something else if you want to. Um, but I'm just going to add in just some, some shading around here so that my leaves can stand out. Let's see, I think we'll do a little bit right there. Uh oh, I got green on here. And then I'm gonna go in that one and do just a little bit of something. All right, and if you accent and you're like, oh gosh, I hate it. Mary, thank you. Hey, Robin, good morning, love. How are you? All right, Mary wants me to add some white. I'm going to add some white. Let's see. We'll just go right in here and add just a little bit. I'm not going to add too much, though. My white's mixing with my my um, black. Okay, so I added some white. I'm gonna back this up. I want to show you guys what this looks like from a distance. Okay, because when you're looking at it, you're gonna be looking at it on your front door. So what I would suggest at this point is take a step back and look at it and I'm looking and I see that this needs something. Um, when you're looking at it up close, you can't always tell. So when you back it up, that's when you're gonna see all the little things that you can do better, okay? So anytime you're doing a piece of art, um, walk away from it and um, come, come right back and, or come back later and um, figure out what else it needs. Okay, so these two flowers I was happy with, but I'm going to add some more um, light pink in here. And I'm going to darken it up too. 
just add a little bit more depth. Can y'all see that on the camera? Okay, now let's back it up and look at it again. All right, I like that better, but I feel like I need a little bit right here. So let's add a little bit more. All right, now let's look at it. Okay, I like that much better. What do y'all think? But now I think Mary's right and it needs a little bit of white down there. So let's add a little bit of white. some white right here all right so this is like a group effort painting okay I think I like that much better everybody happy with that so now I want to work on the bottom <coughs> and for this I'm gonna do um, an initial now you can just letter it um, you could actually go to let me show you first mm -hmm. give me just a second Okay, you could do tracing paper, which if you've taken my free lettering workshop, you know that I love to use graphite paper, but <laughs> thank you. Okay, so I love to use graphite paper, but um, I also like to use tracing paper to draw out what I want it to look like so that I can trace it on so that you get it right. The, I'm going to say right the first time. That way you can practice on your tracing paper before you put it on your board. Now one of the things you need to do when you're doing this is figure out, and this I still have some wet paint so I'm not setting it down, but figure out the size that you want it to be and then cut your tracing paper down to that size. So I'm going to cut this one in half, Ooh, kind of wet paint. then I'm going to set it down and I want it right here. But you could always just draw out, you could um, just use a pencil. Just for me, it's gonna be easier when I go to position this if I wanna trace it on. Sorry guys, my trimmer's really bad this morning. Um, but it's gonna be easier for me to just lay it down. So this is the size I want. I want it to be, looking at it now, I've got a square. So I wanna do rounded to, so that it's not so squared off. Okay, so I've got to make sure that whatever letter I do, it's rounded. Now, thinking about this, um, we are in the middle of a pandemic right now. And what better way to thank your neighbors, thank your hair, you know, whoever it is, thank your friends, whatever, than gifting them something that you made. So, in saying this, I am going to put a letter on here that is not my last name and I'm gonna gift this to someone else okay so I'm going to see what letter do I want to put who do I want to gift today I think I know all right so I'm gonna move my sign and I'm gonna letter an R now if you are new to Kinsley's creative palette um, I have a virtual membership where you paint online with me every month and something that my members have been asking for is help with lettering. And guys, we are adding a whole new element where we're gonna have one lettering workshop a month um, and I'm gonna help you grow your skills so that you're not so scared to write on your board. But the letter that I'm gonna do is an R. Oh, no, it's a B, sorry. Uh -oh, that probably just gave it away to my locals who I was doing this for. All right, so I drew a B. Now, I'm gonna use faux calligraphy and I'm gonna change this B up and make sure that it's exactly like I like it. Bring that out further. I'm gonna bring this out and like this instead. So I'm just gonna keep tracing over this until I get it the way I want it. And then I can either replicate it onto my board or I can use this and trace it on with graphite paper. If you're um, new to watching, 
graphite paper is another thing that I use quite often. And <laughs> I'm sorry, Alicia, you can paint. But yes, Alicia, you know who it is because I, I messed up and was going to put the wrong initial. All right, so um, I'm going to actually bring this down a little bit and see what that looks like. And let's see. So let me go like this. And like this. Okay, so it's hard to see, but there's my B. Now I tilted it. But since it fits on this paper, I know it's going to be the right size. So what I'm going to do at this point, I'm happy with my B, is I'm going to cut around it. And I'm going to position it exactly like I want it on my board. Okay, so let me set it down. I'm going to move this. Um, and friends, I was going to tell you too... I, um, I broke this board when I was cutting it. <laughs> yes. Hey, you need to delete that comment because if she watches later, she might know. Um, but um, I broke this board when I was cutting it. And so I actually have a video um, and um, a blog about how to fix a broken door hanger. So I hope you'll check that out because a lot of times when you're new to cutting or um, maybe when your blade gets old or your wood is super dry, like every, all these different factors, sometimes you can break your boards. Um, but, but a piece this big, I didn't want to just scrap. And watering can doesn't make sense without a handle. So I had to put my handle back on. So anyway, that blog post, I believe, is going up on Friday um, so that you can save any wood that maybe you messed up. Okay, I'm touching all of this. That has had a little bit um, still wet, so I, I just smushed it right off. I'm gonna set this down and get it where I want it. Ah, I love it. And then I'm gonna take my graphite paper. I'm gonna hold this down so I know my placing is right, and I'm just gonna slip it right underneath there. All right, then I'm gonna take a um, pencil or whatever you want to to trace and I'm going to trace this letter including the thickenings right on to my board and this is the way that you can get more confident in lettering on your door hangers using your own handwriting Okay, I will message you, Miss Mary. All right, so there's my letter. It's it's kind of hard to see, but it's traced on. At this point, I could take, sorry, I'm getting all, oh, getting all congested. Um, I could take a um, um, paintbrush, and it, I would probably use something like thin and round, and I would water down my black paint. So I'm gonna, I'll show y'all how this would work. I'm gonna water down my black paint, I just dip it in the water from my paintbrush water cup. And when you're lettering on your door hangers, you want your paint to be really thin. So that's why I watered my paint down. Now, then I would just push down thicker where my lines were thicker. I'm gonna use this point to clean that up a little bit. And then where my lines get thin, I lift my brush so that only the tip of the, the bristles are, are down. Does that make sense? Hey, sweetheart. You're what? I'm looking. <gasps> Do you like it? We're going to take it and surprise somebody today. All right. So I've got the thick part right here. And then I'm going to go ahead and do these other thick parts. And remember, you push down so that your brush kind of flattens. And then for the thin parts, you lift up so that only the tip is showing, or is down. Now I'm gonna lift up, and I'm gonna bring that right there. You see how I got the thin? So I'm just gonna keep going. And friends, if you enjoy this and you need a creative break, my membership is opening on April 20th and uh, we would love to have you and if you cut your own boards it's less than 20 bucks a month but the price is going up next launch 
So the next time we open, which will be in September, um, it's actually gonna be more expensive. But if you're already in the membership, you pay the same price. Like your price doesn't go up is what I'm saying. All right, now do this last part. Remember, this is a thin part, so I don't wanna push down. Now, if I wanted to, to get some more thickness to make that a little bit more, um, like a difference in the thickness, I can make that thicker now. Let me do this. Okay, the next thing I wanna tell you is, I showed you how to do this with a brush, but my favorite way is with a Posca pen. So if you struggle with accents and things like that on your signs and doing lettering and writing, these Posca pens are, they're life changing. So if this is hard for you to letter with, get some of these. They're in my Amazon affiliate store um, and they're also in my Dick Blick store, which I don't know if any of you have shop, shopped at Dick Blick, but they are amazing. They have great sales, they have free shipping, and I also have um, a link on my website to their products. So I've, I've linked all of my favorite products from them, but if you, if you struggle with lettering, I would highly suggest you switch to a marker. I have them in all different colors. They're kind of pricey, so if you're just starting out, you might want to get just a black and a white. And I get mine in a 2.5 mm. Um, okay, now I do want to add some accents to my sign. One of the things that I want to do is I'm going to get the back end of a paintbrush. I need to get some fresh black paint. Anytime you're doing this technique, your paint needs to be fresh. So we get some fresh black paint. This paint is super thick. For those of you watching too, if you are um, missing your nail salon, um, message me and uh, I'll show you how I do my nails at home. I um, fell in love with Color Street last year. Sorry, I'm not showing you that anymore. I fell in love with Color Street last year and I have a VIP page where I to show you how to use them and all the different designs. You can do them from home. All right, so I'm just doing, I've dipped in the back of, or the back end of a paintbrush, so not the br bristle part, the back end, and I'm making dots by just setting it down on my board. The thicker your paint is, the harder it is to do this. So that's why you don't want to use paint that's been sitting on your palette so like the black that I used to do this and this, um, can't couldn't use it. I had to get some new. And I'm just gonna make these dots just like this. We're gonna use the same technique as we did with the other dots as far as they need to be in a triangular pattern. That way your dots are uniform and they don't look like you have 12 of them in one spot. Hey guys, I'm gonna need y'all to go if you're gonna be laughing. Yes, yeah, sure. So that's how you will make those smaller dots. Now those, I can't, I was gonna hold my board up, but I can't do that yet because those are very drippy because they're thick. So let's do a few accents. Do I wanna use this brush? Um, I think I'm gonna size down to a smaller, stiffer brush that, and I'm gonna use, um, this one has a angled tip. I'm going to thin my paint out some more because these are just accents and black goes a long way and I'm just going to come around the edges and just add a little bit, oh, I got that too much. I'm just going to add a little bit of um, highlighting. Now, if you did like me and you got a little bit too much, just let it dry and come back and paint um, gray over the top of it. it. It makes it really hard when my trimmer is acting up. All right, so I think that we are about done. I'm gonna add some white accents to my B, but to do that, I'm gonna use my white Posca pen. Um, Angela, 
I, if Amy's still on, Amy, can you link my post where I introduced everybody to Dick Blick? Because I believe that they are still, um, they're still shipping and they have the best selection. And I don't know if she's still on or not. If not, I will do it when I jump off. All right, so I'm just gonna add some accents to my B. I've gotta make sure I don't get in my wet paint though, because that'll ruin a paint marker super fast. All right, so I've got that on. Um, you can also add some white accents where you did your black and where you didn't do your black. Okay, let me show y'all what this looks like and I can go back and I'm, I'm probably gonna, um, see, I'm probably gonna fix this where I did too much, but I need to let that dry first. So that is, let's see if I can get it because Amy's gonna grab this. That is our watering can. I hope that you enjoyed this, and I hope that you will, um, hope that you will try it, paint it, and um, hang it on your front door. And please send me pictures. I love to see pictures. Love, love, love to see pictures. Uh, and also, if you want more information about um, the membership opening up in a couple weeks, message me, and I will let you know how to get on the wait list. All right, friends, um, I have another live here in 15 minutes, so I'm going to jump off, but um, I hope you all have a great day. Bye.